Let's make planning this year's garden a lot easier with the Planter app. This app is packed full of features. It has companion and combative planting, which are indicated by green and red circles. It has a simple drag and drop interface. It has 80 plus plants and thousands of varieties. All the info is needed to grow veggies, including when to start seeds, transplant and harvest, the ability to create custom plants and varieties, a growing guide with in-depth articles to supplement the quick info in the app, not to mention that you can view it and use it both on your PC and on your mobile device, so you can always be planting your garden on the go. This app is used in my garden year-round to plan the upcoming seasons, reference the last year's seasons so I know when to rotate, and it also helps me to learn more about companion planting using the visual cues. When you create your garden, it's going to be based on the dimensions and each block is going to be a square foot. I've had a lot of fun using this app and the Planter app, which is spelled P-L-A-N-T-E-R, is available in your app store on both Google and Apple. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and plan your garden and use the link below to get a discount on the Planter app. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Leonard just sent me a message and said, we're going back to a history lesson. No, not quite. (laughs) We ain't going there yet. But look, everybody, I want to say this real quick before we get started. Check us out on Patreon. Uh, Links are below. And then also, if you go to BackyardGardensTV.com, we have all kinds of affiliate links, and we're going to be adding more, hopefully, of stuff that you'll already use that will help us at no extra cost to you. Essential Edibles. So we did an episode, what is it, late last year, maybe, Batavia? Mm Mm-hmm. Like November-ish. November-ish. And we, um, we released it on Patreon, and it was kind of the history of gardening and stuff like that. And this subject was the first episode. It was a subject that came up within the subject. And um, it really struck home to us. So we have been working hard on our plans, and I think we might want to adopt this a little bit. What do you think? It speaks to me. It does? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Like it's, there's a simple simplicity that I feel like I want to achieve, um, whether or not it's it's going to be my reality. Like I visualize the garden being kind of this simple place and growing simple food um, because that's the way that I eat. Right. Yeah. And I mean, <clears throat> so I guess we what we really need to start off with is exactly what is an essential edible. Wouldn't you say? OK. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, like before the episode started, we said we were going to start with that, right? (laughs) I'm acting, okay? Get off my back. I can't help it. I'm in rare form today, man. This is, I don't know. I don't know if this is New Year, New Batavia anymore. No, New Year, New Batavia, the door slammed and the good good Lord hit you. What what is it? Don't let the doorknob hit you where the good Lord splits you. That's what happened. But I, I, this is a good day, a good morning. I slept well. I'm feeling fresh. We're recording in the morning, which secretly I'm hoping that I can get young Ben to do more often. Like, like buckle up, guys and gals. This is the best version of me. Uh, like, that's a big setup, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It really is. So here we go. <laughs> From here on out, everybody, when you go to listen to this, grab a cup of tea because we're doing them in the morning. But yeah. we digress. And also, you weren't getting the best uh, version of me like in the last, you know, three years because we've been recording in the afternoon. So thanks for uh, sticking it out with us. So an essential edible, um, I don't even know if there's a real definition, but I'm going to give you my definition. And I would say um, that it's it's a vegetable that you grow that you eat a lot. That's like a cornerstone in your in your dishes, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You, agree. You agree with that definition? Yeah. Yeah. And I I think that's um, one of the benefits, though, is it's not only a list of vegetables. I think that there's some vegetables that we can kind of lean into and say this is pretty common across a lot of tables, you know, Um, but I don't think that it's I don't think there is an exhaustive list that's been published that says it's only these things. No, no. I mean, I guess 
I know when we did that other episode, there was a list of like common vegetables grown in like the 17 and 1800s that really mm-hmm. were, you know, deemed the essentials. And if you want to take it back to, to that, I mean, it was basically stuff like long storage items could be used in multiple dishes, you know, cabbages, carrots, stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. I believe that tomatoes weren't even on the list at all, which was... At first, it was shocking, but then I started thinking about it. I'm like, actually, it's not that shocking, you know? But I think yeah. I think that the focus was mostly on, like, cool season gardens. And in the summer, like, our diets change, you know? Especially if you practice seasonal eating. Um, you <laughs> definitely, your you know, your diet will change throughout the course of the year. So I think there's multiple essential edibles for multiple seasons. Yeah. Maybe I'll be as bold as to say that we have reintroduced the term and now we're defining it, you know, as we speak. Mm, That's scary. I don't know if I'm ready for that responsibility. Well, it's kind of hard now to, you know, hear edible associated with something and not think, you know, something different. Yeah, we ain't talking about weed, but that could be essential to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, No, I think that... um, Paring down your thoughts around like this is what's essential for your garden, essential for your kitchen, essential for your plate, you know, and as you talked about, you mentioned tomatoes and maybe how they were lacking. It made me like kind of ear bookmark a rabbit hole I want to go down on, on the Internet when kind of when did tomatoes become the thing that represents the home garden? This is off track, off subject. That's also a, a version of morning Batavia. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, but that's, that's a good question. Uh, everybody put a pin in that. We'll be back <laughs> to talk about that one day, probably. But, um, yeah, so now you you know what an essential edible is, like the concept behind it. Yeah. And it, look, elephant in the room is, Batavia brought it up. Look, if cannabis is an essential edible, do you put it on your list? Okay, there it is. Mm-hmm. That's out there. Um, I'm really trying not to call it weed or chronic or anything. I'm trying to like be respectful and political about it and call it marijuana or cannabis. Mm. Okay. So that's just a personal thing I'm doing. But oh, okay. <laughs> look, I want it to be legalized, and if I keep calling it weed and everybody else does, it just gives it a bad name. Okay, because I'm not here to question all of your decisions. That's okay. That's okay. Somebody out there wants to know, but the question that. Batavia and I came up with both were like, why should we grow essential edibles? Like, mm-hmm. especially in 2023, how old do you feel now? Is why should we grow an essential edible? Go. Because it's something that we want in our gardens. <laughs> so that's the Sunday you, school I, answer. Yeah. So I think that um, when. If I take these last years of gardening, so if I go back to like 2008 and those, you know, the first garden for me and then those years afterwards, there is no like planning of growing food to cross multiple plates or, you know, like it's not like I'm growing to eat in a full season. It was it'd be nice to grow a few things. Right. And so there isn't there wasn't the need for me to kind of pare down and say, we're the things that I absolutely want kind of in, you know, to be harvested for my garden. That wasn't it. When you start to think about growing food um, for longer consumption, like, you know, to to represent more of what you're you know, you're eating. So we always say you say this and I still agree. You're not. um, How do you say it? You're you're adding to uh, your everyday meals with your garden it's not to replace like what you do with the grocery store you say it in a different way thank you that's the word uh so the garden is meant to supplement but it's supplementing more and more each year for you right yeah during times yeah it is yeah well that's the same for me and so now now i have to ask myself like it doesn't make sense for me just to have a, a cucumber plant and a pepper plant and be done with it, right? That, that's my garden has evolved or my desire to garden has evolved. So now you're really getting down to the basics. Like you know, 10 years ago, I would have never thought to grow onions ever, ever, you know, but here I am now. And that's a, a part of what I cook with often. And I have an opportunity to grow them within my garden, right? So that's the why. Did, did I miss the question, Leonard? Rewind. What was the question? Why is it important? 
Yeah, what I said then. Yeah, yeah, see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) you, you, you... you're talking about an entirely different subject, which is valid. And, you know, the evolving of a gardener or a garden. And it's just like you said, like when I started, it was the same thing. Like, oh, yeah, I, I think I'd like to eat a tomato. I'd like to eat an eggplant, mm-hmm. you know, so you plant mm-hmm. it. But then as we get deeper and deeper into it over the years, and I'm sure there's somebody out there right now listening. It's like, I just want to grow some food. Like, this is my first year. And like, I hear you. But eventually, once you start getting better and your gardens get bigger and bigger and whatever manage in whatever way you do it, you'll start. And we talk about this all the time, and I'm not going to stop talking about it. You'll start planning about how your food is going to go into your meals. Right. Mm -hmm, So the mm -hmm. novelty of just growing a certain vegetable will kind of fade. But then you get to this next stage and like. When you grow, I mean, what's your record tomato plants you've grown? Um, I, I may be off by one or two, but maybe like 13 tomato plants. So 13 tomato plants. I thought it was yeah. more than that. I mean, we no, all know no. that you I'm, have 952 just, garden beds. So Yeah, I'm doing this. What, let's call it 15, an odd number of 15, because I've done things in containers while I've also done things in the cage, baby, and then in a couple other spots. So that may be like one or two plants high. No, no, you, you have this thing in your head about I just grow too many tomatoes and you have to have a really high number of tomato plants <laughs> to validate your idea of I grow too many tomato plants. I thought you were in the 20s, the high 20s, so no, well, man. Yeah. I'm- I mean, listen, if I had the space, <laughs> if I could feel in good conscience that if I could feel like I could do that and not sacrifice so many other things, I absolutely would. I see no issue with growing everybody, 20 tomato plants. Everybody stay tuned to Batavia's new channel. Welcome to Potato, <laughs> Batavia's Tomato Farm. That's yeah, what it's going to be. Yeah, boy, An urban tomato farm. I love it. That's but, it. That's all, man. But I mean, if you think about too, and I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to get like overly political, but I, I do need to get factual. Like right now, we know that food prices are high and they're probably not going to go down too much. So when you think about these like vegetables and stuff that we eat all the time, it makes sense to plant more of those instead of fewer of a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mean, and it it took that episode to really step back and look into it to understand that like, there's for me and my garden, let me say it that way. There's no point in growing two cabbage plants and, you know, 10 carrots or something and then four tomato plants and stuff like that when I can really focus on these other things that can get multi uses you know longer storage time so I don't have to eat them Mm -hmm. real quick because I got bad news I just looked into the crisper in my uh, refrigerator and there's a bag full of watermelon radishes that I harvested that were all soft I was pissed oh yeah so but you know what they had been in there for like two months so it kind of goes if I would have realized that they were in there I, there's a long time but if you put a tomato in there it's not going to last anywhere near that long it would be mush you'd be like cleaning out your refrigerator so and the taste would be much much different even though it's garden harvested right so let's let's do this let's reset here so I, I'm having this thought of, around why it's so difficult to kind of plan out what you're growing and how much of a thing you're growing. So now let's, let's stop and say that we don't have gardens and today we are using the grocery store to get all of our food. What are the things that we consider, consider essential edibles in our grocery store list, right? You know, and the things that go into our cart, um, if you don't use a grocery store list and if you don't shame on you i live by it so if you think about that and i'm going to bridge this gap when it comes to i buy one bag of carrots and then i'll buy another bag in probably a month right but i only need to get one bag because that's how many i'm going to eat in a month like that's the way that i want to look at what are my essential edibles Um, But then when you go back to your idea of like, it doesn't make sense for you to buy two cabbages, excuse me, to grow two more than or less than two cabbages or just two cabbages. That's the part where it becomes hard. Like the math is hard because, I mean, you're probably not going to the grocery store to buy 10 cabbages at a time. 
Right. No, but I'm planning. I'm planting my garden so I can harvest my cabbages one at a time. So ding, ding, ding. So there in lies the next part of this is. I don't believe it's going to happen, but you don't think it'll happen. I'm hopeful. No. Mm-mm. Or you don't believe me. Well, I think you. I think you. This is your plan, <laughs> yeah. but I don't think that it's going to work out that way. Well, you know, let's say, like for instance, in my spring garden, I'm just going to focus on cabbage right now. I'm going to mm-hmm. plant. I think. I think the total is like 15 cabbages. So I'll plant one row, you know, next week, and then I'll wait a week or two, and then I'll plant the next one. And I, I definitely can get a couple cabbages at once. So we have a plan. We haven't mm-hmm. figured out, like, if we get more than we can eat, because we know that they store in the refrigerator for a while. Mm-hmm. So we know that if we get two or three heads of cabbage, it's not a huge deal. We can go ahead and keep them in the fridge. You know, we'll make a soup um, mm-hmm. and then we'll make egg rolls and we'll probably make a big batch of egg rolls and freeze them. I'm sure everybody that was listening to this show for any amount of time knows I'm a huge fan of that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if we get more than that, then we'll start making sauerkraut. So we have these plans in place to use up this influx of food as we get it. But you're exactly right. I'm not going to go to the store. And let's just say that the more likely scenario is I'm going to harvest three or four heads at a time. I'm not going to go to the store and buy four heads of cabbage at, cabbage at once. But what that does is that limits me from going into the store. It limits me from having to buy it. And, it, you know, just kind of adds to it. Now, we know that growing cabbage is not a high value food. It's not. Well, some people believe it, but most, I, I would agree. No, most people don't. don't believe yeah, I that. mean, I don't believe that it's a high value food. You um, do this weird thing where you take pictures of prices of food and send them to me. What was the last picture you sent me for cabbage? How much was it ahead? Well, who knows, man? What what is this a magic trick? Yeah. You come up with <laughs> go back into your memory bank and and tell me the thing that you sent me in in the fall. I get um, regular pictures from you of prices of food, which is the weirdest text message I've ever gotten from somebody. You know, you know how long I've been waiting to have someone to send pictures of food <laughs> and prices. I appreciate it though; it keeps it keeps it real. Because, in all honesty. When you start growing a lot of these foods, you get out of touch with the cost of it. And so it's good to be yeah, grounded yeah. and know like, hey, this head of cabbage is three bucks. If you go to the store right now and you buy a cabbage plant, it's going to be five bucks. So is it really mm-hmm. worth it? You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I started a pack of seeds and I've got 50 cabbage plants for 50 cents you know yeah so well i mean i think there is maybe a little bit of like your formula formula for essential edibles your formula for those that are listening could be um things that are you frequently cook with um or eat you know times you know things that maybe have a lower dollar amount you know so for me it's like stop stalling around it potatoes onions yeah you know kind of these are oftentimes referred to as well as food staples, right? You know, carrots. I think, um, I think because those vegetables do hold a while. So, you know, there is this idea of like, there's a season for this. It's different. I wouldn't even name tomatoes as as like a food staple Mm -mm. only because there's a period of time where they're really good. And then the rest of the year, you know? So if you look at those and, and I say, well, no, I'm not going to buy six heads. It, I think it makes it then difficult for me to say, you know, why am I growing six heads of cabbage? You know? And so a part of me is teasing with you around the whole, I don't think you're going to be able to like, you know, um, succession. That's what I thought when you said it, succession. So these cabbage, I think they're going to catch up uh, to each other and they'll all be about the same size. I do think cabbage is a great example because you still have even a lot of time for most of us. If you're growing them like in the spring or fall, where they can stay in the garden first before you even harvest them. Well, that's exactly right. So Mm -hmm. they may all catch up, but I can harvest one earlier. I can harvest Mm -hmm. some later. Mm -hmm. I can do a lot of different things. Now, I do. I want to say this right now because we've beat around the bush about it. The essential edible list is only for you as an individual. There is not a list that I can give you or Batavia can give you that says, this is what you need to grow. You'll see that all the time, but you know what you eat. And that's the beauty of all of this is, 
your essential, essential, essential edibles are based off of your taste, your family's needs, and what you eat, how you cook, what region you're from. I mean, there's a lot mm-hmm. of different variables here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I th- think that that whole side uh, conversation around six or two. 10 or 2, 12 or 2. Like, I've never put more than one head of cabbage in my cart at the same time. Now, again, you, you know, you have people that are picking, for, um, uh, buying food for bigger families. It may take you, you know, two heads of cabbage or three for a pot of cabbage. Yeah. You know, if that's the way that you're serving it. Or, like, like if you're talking about kimchi, it's a whole different story. But I think when you think about what you want to eat, what your essential edible list is, then you, also have to kind of ratchet that up when it comes to the number of uh, plants that you want to put into your garden because you're then also planning for it to be across a period of time let me tell you something that i i had to break a habit of please tell me you know so there is this oftentimes this concept of only once you grow it only eat it if you grow it yeah right um and there's some things that i just uh, absolutely agree i love the texture of tomatoes maybe that's it um it's just something that I, I want in all of my kind of garden salads not maybe a caesar salad but garden salads and so i sacrifice and i eat crappy tomatoes during the winter you know so it's not that's as love much as i love them it's not like i limit myself with them and there are other things where it's like you know it's hard for me to buy kale because it's so expensive Right. And I know how much can come come off of one single plant. You know, it's super hard for me to do it. But I broke myself of the habit of saying, you know, I didn't have a lot of kale coming out of my fall. It's okay to pick some up you know, at the store if you want, you know. So but I bring that up to say you're plotting out growing a number of plants, because if cabbage is your one of your essential edibles, it's great if it is, then you're just not saying that you want. Uh, the cabbage one week of the growing season right you know you're saying that you want it multiple peppers like sweet peppers like bell peppers it's probably an essential edible for a lot of people you know probably right next to onions as far as you know the way that i cook and the way that i know a lot of people cook that's probably something that you know if the price wasn't what they were, wasn't isn't what it, what it actually is, people will be buying a lot more of yeah. them um and so that's another good example of and Peppers are probably the thing right behind tomatoes I, I try to grow the most of. Um, it's a situ edible for me if I'm growing it because I just can't, you know, come to p- pay the prices as, as a regular kind of food purchase. Um, so, so yeah, and rent. We're getting into the afternoon, guys. Just that quickly, morning Batavia is starting to yeah, wane. No, <laughs> you know, you, you said something really key in that statement um, that if it wasn't as expensive as it was, people would buy more. And I think that's something else to look into as well. When you think about your essential edibles, because it really comes down to like, you know, this, I may not eat this all the time, but if I had the opportunity, would I eat it more? You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So there was a, uh, all of my new England friends on the show will know that you can, um, you can get, uh, fiddleheads in the spring. Mm-hmm. And the fiddlehead, do you know what those are? I know what fennel is. Fiddle. And I know what the head of fiddle. F- oh, like fiddle fig leaf, like the plant. Fiddle? It's like a fern when the like fern, I play a fiddle. You know when the fern starts to curl right when it uh-huh. opens up. That's what, and you can get them all through New England, like all spring. Oh, okay. You can buy no, them like packages of them, fresh, and they're delicious, but they're expensive. So that's something that can be an, would be an essential edible for me because hmm. if I could grow it I would know I haven't seen it down here I think people would look at you like you're crazy in the south if you ate it but that was something that was very delicious same with like snow peas I would never buy snow peas at the store but I can grow them and get handfuls a day off of it so you know and as far as like a high value crop that's that goes right mm-hmm. on up there so mm-hmm mm-hmm I see you writing. Okay, they can't. Are you taking notes? Yeah, well, no, I haven't. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to come back to this subject in a future conversation. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, I think it feeds into this too a little bit, but when we start... Go ahead. 
So does this mean that your entire garden is only full of essential edibles? Well, that's where I was going next. So, uh, no. I don't think... Well, here here's a point in the show where we kind of start talking about what we plan to do. So I've, I've thought about this hard. Um, I've got a lot of onions growing this year. I, so far, I've planted 96 onions in my garden. Are they all going to make it? I don't know, but... That's the biggest portion of an essential, and what I consider the number one essential edible is an onion because it goes in like every food, every dish, you know, anything calls for an onion, right? Salad, which by- it's a great starting point with a lot of meals. Yeah. It is. And by the way, going back to the last episode, I gave you a chicken noodle soup recipe. I forgot to tell you to saute an onion first. So there's that. <laughs> so if you ate it last week and you're like, yeah, it wasn't good. That's why. But I think that you have to look at your garden plan and see like, hey, how much of this is something that I want? But I think you you definitely need to leave space for stuff that's like interesting to you or Mm -hmm. just random things. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. tomatoes aren't an essential edible to me, but I'm still going to grow them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, I take that back. They are an essential edible to me. As I make my list of essential edibles, I don't think that it's the only thing that I'm growing. Like, because I mean, you could also just cheat that and say anything you grow, you consider it an essential edible. Um, so, is there a quantity? Like, do you need to grow a lot of the thing if you consider it essential edible? Well, Barbara Walters, I mean, may she rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm being interviewed here. Um, no, I don't think there's, you know, I think it's, again, it's a very personal decision. I mean, mm-hmm, for, mm-hmm. like for you, for instance, you know, I mean, is cabbage one of yours? No. Collards is though, right? Yeah. yeah so how many collard yeah. plants would you grow? Um, realistically. My max has probably been, um, realistically, a dozen. A dozen collard plants. See, for me, only- you get all the spice, all the like, I, and I dare you to question me. That absolutely is realistic. <laughs> no, in all honesty, that that's paired with uh, what I want to grow, what I want to eat fresh, what I want to put away, what I want to to gift. Yeah, right. You know, so twelve has been, you know, that that makes sense to me. That's like almost a full bed. It's over planting a bed, the beds that I use the size, but. See, and f- it makes me happy for us collards. I think they they could be an essential. I mean, for us, any kind of green falls into that. So you know, kale, mm-hmm. collards. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess that's about it. No mustard. They all kind of fall into that. I, I lump them together, but they are an essential edible for me. But I don't need twelve of all of them put together to meet our needs. But I really, really, really like that. I really like the thought of a, you know, non lettuce leafy green. Like I have a like two of of my picture boxes. I know you love that seed sorting mechanism, but two of them are labeled leafy greens. Yeah. You know, and I dump basically everything besides things that are like some no because i have a separate label for a brassica so it's kind of like anything that's in between like something in the brassica family and lettuce falls under there char falls under yeah. there you know um uh mustards fall under there uh not spinach because i have a whole nother box for spinach but there is room to say you want greens in your diet and you're not picky about which type you know you may have two that you really like you may have six that you really like and some of those greens may grow throughout your garden season depending on what they are bok choy is a good example of a leafy green in my mind right that's the way i categorize it i actually i think i may even say i love that concept of not a single vegetable becomes an essential edible for you young ben but the idea of leafy greens which i'm going to make you use that term um is the essential edible yeah. Love it. So, and I don't have lettuce fall into that category, just so you know. No. At all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's it's in, in between. Yeah. It's totally lettuce different. And, because there's yeah. like, for me, I mean, sandwiches and salads, you know, that's lettuce. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. when you, you start mixing all these other things and it's like, you know, my son, he doesn't necessarily care for collards that much. My wife doesn't necessarily care for kale that much. Mm-hmm. But when I grow it, 
And I'm like, all right, well, we got collards this week. And she's like, well, I'm like, well, we're going to make it. You know, you kind of deal with it. But once we cook it, you can't tell if you cook it right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can use yeah. these in multiple recipes and interchangeably. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cabbage, yeah, yeah. not so much. Cabbage cooks down different. It's mm-hmm, definitely got mm-hmm. its place. And by the way, a mm-hmm. good old pot of boiled cabbage. Mm, can't argue with this. a couple peppercorns. Good night. Oh, sorry. It's not recipe of the day yet. So... Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's personal for everybody. So when you tell me you're going to grow 12 collard plants, I'm like, Whoa, that's crazy. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. that's you, you know, I've got right now in my garden, I've got five collard plants and I need to, I want to plant one more of my collards that I save seeds from cause I want them to go to seed so mm-hmm. that I can save the seed because after six generations of saving seed, it kind of gets adapted to your climate. Okay. So I want to do that. But I don't need another collard plant in my garden. As a matter of fact, I don't need the collard plants that I have now. If you were living next door to me, I'd bring you all of my harvest from it. You know what I mean? We don't need that many. So it's kind of... Be still, my heart. (laughs) So it's kind of figuring out what you need and how much of it you need. And even lumping these things together. I I didn't even think about that before, but that's a great idea. Is like lumping different things together. Like squashes, for instance. Like if you move from spring into summer zucchinis uh-huh. and squashes and uh-huh. stuff like that like you can lump those together into an essential tell- edible we're inventing the next movement you're not listening to me um i do want to go back to collards because i always want to go back to collards but you said it at the beginning of the, the episode i didn't write it down because i knew i would listen to the episode again and i'd be able to make my note but you know it's it's the the formula for what makes things that are an essential edible and a part of that is where you garden at yeah and collards are a great example of something I could grow from spring well into fall, all throughout spring, summer, and fall. I've had success in my area, right? I'm in garden zone 6A as an apple, but that's not the, it's specifically like the climate that's created in Chicago is the reason why I believe that I've been able to grow these greens um, all throughout, you know. It didn't used to Um, be 6A as an apple, by the way. I mean, (laughs) if you want to talk about old stuff, sure. (laughs) Oh, you know, high five, virtual high fives to those that get it. And for those that don't, don't worry, you're not missing anything besides a very embarrassing moment uh, for yours truly. Um, But I think that that clearly has influenced it. Like, I don't mean, don't, I wasn't, we had, this is like 25 years ago, um, like one of my cousins had like some young child that we had only met for the first time. It's like a two or three year old. And this baby was like, like eating these collard greens and like turning the cup over to get the pot liquor, you know, just you never see anything like this from a kid that's that small. That wasn't me, you know, like it wasn't even a, a green that we had very often, you know, because again, it takes a lot of work to get, you know, them cleaned up and cooked in the way that we would normally eat them. Um, but a combination maybe of them doing well in my garden, a combination of me cooking them in the way that I have enjoyed them over the years. Like it definitely is a love that I have for them. Um, but maybe it wouldn't be in a situ edible if I didn't have like six months of growing. them. Yeah. You know, so I say that to say that's one more example of why your list is your list and how um, different things influence it. Right. And it doesn't have to be your forever list either. Well, like sweet potatoes is an essential edible for us. You, Interesting. You know, we can grow sweet potatoes pretty well here. We get plenty of growing season. I'm usually harvesting my... I My story is a little different than a lot of people farther north of me where I'm harvesting my, potato, my sweet potatoes when there's still a good month and a half left of hot weather. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. so we have plenty of growing season for it. So that's on my list. We enjoy them. We mash them, we bake them, we boil them, we do mostly bake them, but you know, we do all kinds of different ways with them. So like last year when we didn't get a great harvest from it, it was actually devastating to Mm -hmm. us. I mean, we still ate sweet potatoes. Don't get me wrong. We still have a couple, but nowhere near the amount we needed. So for our family, it was not a good situation. So, and I mean, I think in the past, last year was the first year I actually grew um, p- potatoes, regular potatoes. And they, again, they have become an essential edible because you can eat them in so many ways. You know, f- I, you, what's your favorite way to eat a potato, by the way? 
other than french fries that's a hard one so the give me all the things part of me it's like it's french fries hand down but probably a baked potato is my favorite way vinegar or no vinegar on your french fries no vinegar i don't know if even you gave me the recipe years ago as a part of the show and i I bought the malt uh, vinegar and never made it because that's kind of the thing i do um so i don't even know if i've ever even had um Oh, I've been to London, so I must have had. Yeah, yeah. Did you like the French fries? <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, I'm i talking about like oven roasted potatoes. I don't eat it as often because who has 45 minutes to wait for a, yeah. a potato to, <laughs> to cook in the oven? But every time I have a baked potato with butter and a little bit of salt, I do feel like this is what heaven could be like. Yeah, I like um, I like boiled potatoes. So, and add a little bit of avocado if you have a fresh avocado, and I know it's hit or miss with those. Yeah. Um, so it's actually funny you talk about cabbage because we just had a new dish, and I'll, I'll give it one day on here, um, that we can add to our cabbage and also our potato um, uses. And that's bubble and squeak, I think is the name of it. It's a British dish, I believe. That was really mm-hmm. good. So, you know, and that's the thing is, it's just like you said, as you grow more of these in your climate, allows you to have these prolonged, long harvests of some of these plants. You learn how to consume them more and more. Mm-hmm. And I think as a gardener, wherever you live, your essential edibles will change as you move from one region to the next. What do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was talking to a buddy uh, this week and I'm just like, you know, moving. It's so stressful. It's so hard. I have no desire to do it unless I'm moving to a warmer climate. And sometimes for a split second, I think about like, oh my gosh, how much am I going to have to relearn when I move to a warmer climate? And I mean, warmer throughout, you know, 12 months of the year. Um, at just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think what it what ends up probably happening, I bet there were things that you were, um, what she's going to say, nope, never. There were things that you enjoy growing in um, Massachusetts that, um, and specifically New England, if y'all need to know, uh, that you grew there that when you got down, back down to North Carolina, you're kind of like, uh, you were chasing after it. And it was like, nah, this ain't it, partner. That's been a big struggle, as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. because the bulk of my adult growing occurred up there well now it's kind of changed because i'm old now but um it it occurred up there so there are certain things for instance spinach i could Mm -hmm. grow spinach all you wanted up there but here it's real struggle for me to get it to grow because of the heat so it's definitely been a struggle to change and as as the time progresses we go more and more now on the flip side of that because of the way our winters are we can grow different stuff longer and still enjoy some of those things, but then they come with challenges as well. You know what I mean? There's a big difference from growing from fall into winter and spring than there is from planting in late winter into spring and summer. There's a huge difference in that. Here, here. Save for the people in the cheap seats in the back. Um, I don't want to yell. Yeah. Well, they save money so they can actually put more into their garden. Um, I was just thinking about spinach, which, you know, it when it grows well, boy, is it beautiful. And I had a bag of frozen spinach that I bought at the grocery store and I cooked it up in the pasta water um, that I forgot that I had over I mean, I'd really salted the pasta water. And at first, when I even opened the bag, I'm kind of like, this just isn't appetizing. You know, yeah. <laughs> one. And then two, when I cooked it in this very salty water, I'm just like, ugh, you know. Then I was, I reminded myself like, but your plan has been to grow so much spinach where you can just basically freeze so much of it. it there was a moment where I was like, maybe not so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I that's a great crop and it's one that I've struggled growing and I just think I just missed I'm missing the mark on the timing of it. So for all of the joy and the bragging I do about how long I can grow collar, it's it's a, a great example of something that every year I've been trying to do it. It's like I get I get enough for a good spinach salad. Well, you know what? You bring up something really good. Let's talk about well, let's you. talk about spinach for a second, okay? Or you're welcome. 
Uh, yeah, I think either one of those responses mm-hmm. were. Um, or no, one more. Of course, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the confidence is exuding. So um, let's talk about spinach, though, because we all know that when you when you cook spinach, you need to have more than five spinach leaves, right? <laughs> now, if if you don't, you're going to learn the hard right. way. <laughs> you're going to, I mean, because once you cook it down, you got like not even a teaspoon. So what does that mean? You know, there's a reason why they sell spinach in big one pound tubs at your common grocery store. So if you look at that, you have to plant a lot of spinach in order to meet your needs for you to eat. So does that make it a good, essential edible crop in a, you know, an average size garden, whatever average is? I think ours are above average in size, but I don't think by any stretch that we have like super large gardens. I don't know if it's if it's good to add to my list or your list or anyone's list of an essential edible. My vision of it is I could have so many smoothies, you know, with all the spinach that I'm growing and that's never come to fruition. Um, my vision has also been at the early part of spring, you will see these front yard garden beds full of spinach like I can see it still hasn't happened right um and you know there's a part of me that chases it because it makes sense to me i don't know exactly why i can't explain why because all the things that we're talking about how much it shrinks down how little of a cooked product you have difficulties with growing it things that may do better in that same space at that time like all of those seem like reasons it's like yeah you grow like some of it and just keep moving like but do you add it to this list of things that you have to have in your garden i'm not sure um i do think the one piece which again i'm going to have leonard send you a note to say don't go too far because this is a part of a future episode but there's also the whole nutritional value bit you know so we talk about what we're growing and and yeah should it be an essential edible well spinach is high in key elements um so there is that, but I think part of it too is managing your expectation of your harvest, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you're used to buying a big tub of spinach and you cook yeah. it in yep. two or three meals, it's going to be really hard to get that, right? But yeah. here's where the key word comes in, supplement. So you can easily supplement that and say, look, I'm going to go to the store and buy my cooking spinach, but all this is going to be my smoothie spinach, Mm-hmm, or my mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. my salad spinach or something like that like you can do that but when it comes down to like this crop in particular and you can insert any crop you want into this it's just well, for the ease of conversation yeah. mass plantings but there's also the growing wait there's a growing pattern of spinach as well it's not as um, dominant in the whole cut and come again right you know you're going to run into hot weather before you get really, you well, know, it depends on where you are too. Harvest. Yeah, but mass plantings of spinach work out better, right? And that's where we come full circle, and then we start talking about focusing on essential edibles, and then that leaves you bigger swaths to plant these things that may need that. Hmm. How many how many spinach plants go in a square foot? You're the master square foot gardener here. Nine. Is it nine? Guessing. I don't know. What, who are you? Who do you think you're talking to? I just told you, the master square foot gardener. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds right. That sounds like too much, though, doesn't it? Uh, no, it doesn't, actually. All right, let's I'm see. Spinach square foot gardening. Nine plants. Nine. Be confident in yourself, Batavia. You've got this, girl. So nine plants in a square foot. So if you think about that, and you have a four by eight bed, you can put... And oh, maybe. No, that's wrong, it seems. Nine plants per square foot, four plants per square foot. There's some logic to use where you should use basically half of that. Still be confident, girl. You got this. Doesn't matter. Go let's on. just say, let's just call it even, call it five. I can't do four and a half because nobody has half a plant. <laughs> so if you have a couple square feet, you can get in. Let's just say, you know, you got four square feet, 20 plants. That's That's a lot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. there's an argument behind it. And that's when I say like focusing on growing your essential edibles will get you. I think it may get you more of the desirable amount that you need to focus on your diet because 
like this year things are coming out of my garden that would normally go in. So hmm. what is an essential mm-hmm. edible for spring for you? Other than collards. Um, it would be, I'd say it'd be lettuce. Okay. So are you going to plant more lettuce than normal? I always plant more lettuce. No, I'm not going to plant more lettuce than normal. I'm actually going to scale back because basically a lot of my lettuce gets caught by the summer. That question backfired then. <laughs> Yeah, and goes to see. Yeah, well, this is what happens when you try to do this setup, and your people didn't talk to my people. Uh, yeah, I keep clearly, on trying to tell you clearly. Well, so the the goal, the point is, is like I'm going to put more cabbage plants in, but there's going to be a sacrifice. So, is there kind of some kind of fun plant to grow, or something that's not as essential that's going to be taken out of the plan? Mm-hmm. And for me, that was cauliflower. Yeah. You know, cauliflower coming out. I'm not going to grow those this year. I'm going to use it space that I would give to that to other things that are more essential. Like I enjoy cauliflower one way and one way only. But if I don't, if I can't, I can go buy a cauliflower and have that one meal versus taking up that space. Mm-hmm. And in mm-hmm. that one space, I could put five spinach plants. Yeah. Well, the thing I like about something like, um, cauliflower if you're able to start it by seed which a billion people are then you could just have a few plants if you like yeah. um their shelf life is very different than some of those other things that are in the brassica family or brassica adjacent um i think carrots are a good example of something that again some of the formula it grows I've been able to grow it pretty well. There is a period of a longer growing season for me. I can start it in the spring and harvest it, you know, once they kind of set root all the way up until like August easily. Um, And that has worked well for me so far. Um, And then the question becomes, should I just be growing more of that? Like I found a crop that really works. And if I do though, it still needs space. So something you know, is and it's probably some of the rich soil too that I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna use this bed. This bed does these grows of these other things really well, but I'm gonna put carrots in this bed because I know that they'll do excellent here. Right. Um, so there is a little bit of a sacrifice. I haven't, especially because I'm gonna be direct sowing carrots. That gives me time, and I still haven't worked through my garden plan. That gives me time to figure out if I'm gonna have to make some sacrifices. You know. Because I would consider carrots one of my essential edibles. So if you would have just framed that question differently, I could have given you a winning response. <laughs> okay, well, excuse me. So what are, um, more quickly, what are your essential edibles for spring? Uh, carrots, lettuce. I don't know if we... Sp- spinach. Like, I'm not giving up, yeah. right? And then brassicas in the bucket. Um, so that includes your collards, that includes your broccoli, that includes your, um, your cabbage, right? It's going to take my cabbage a bit longer to put on a head. So I'll be harvesting it, you know, way after these other ones. Right. Um, but it's not like equal numbers of plants for any of those things. And those kind of go into like your bucket of leafy greens. I have a similar bucket when it comes to those. So plants. you're going to be focusing more so Onions. on those than other plants that fall outside of that list. Soup. Yeah. And other focusing more on those and starting with those as this is what I want to plant. And then th- other things fit in where they get right. in. The saying is actually getting whether you fit in, but you get it. So for me, it would be carrots, greens, cabbage, and um, turnips. Those are my essentials. And then oh, I onions. forgot about turnips, and I forgot about um, beets, but they're not essential edibles. Right. I do want them in my spring garden, so they're they are poor them for right now. They are an afterthought, if you yep. will. Yep. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, beets are the same for me. They are an afterthought, but that, I have mm-hmm. a couple beets in my greenhouse right now. And I mean, I have, I think I'm going to harvest one beet next week and it's going to be enough for me to have four or five smoothies <laughs> off of it. Like, I'm not like, oh, thank God I got beets. That's not my, yeah. that's not yeah, my, yeah, my yeah. story. You could go with a garden without beets if you, you know. Yeah. So, what about summer? You what are your to. essentials? We talked about the framework of this episode and you didn't mention this. So essentials for summer are tomatoes, um, peppers, beans, <laughs> and 
answer. That's it? Yeah. You know, I wonder if potatoes were supposed to be in that spring one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they should be. Um, I think that's it. I'm going to go with that's it. Yep. And I have a list of things that aren't, but I'll still be growing. So mine are going to be tomatoes um, of all kinds, uh, black eyed peas, and um, to be specific, desi squash, not mm-hmm. summer squashes, but desi squash, which I thoroughly mm-hmm. enjoy. Um, I need to do a germination test to see if my seeds are going to make it. If not, I got to buy more. And then... I think that's it. And then I have my fruit trees, so they're essentials, but they don't count. So, oh, peppers. All my different peppers, so sweets and hots and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I um, we've been talking about essential edibles for like eight months now, specifically. Um, maybe shorter, maybe longer, like six months, let's call it. And this has been a part of going into the 2023 garden season, but I've not looked at it. Like it's the make sure you include these in your garden. But I didn't look at it with this is the starting point for your garden and planning your garden. And it's I really like the idea of organizing kind of my list of what I'm growing in that way, because it makes me feel really good. What wasn't on my summer essential, you know, growing list was squash of any kind. Yeah. You know, Um, but I'm going to grow it. But it's okay. It it it. I feel like it's, I just had a freeing moment. Yeah. Not only is it okay if I don't have whatever a lot of plants are, whatever, like, you know, whatever that number is in my head. And maybe it could make me okay with if they don't do well either. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to say well, sweet potatoes. It wasn't marked. Hmm? I forgot to say sweet potatoes. You triggered me to say that. I had to get it out. Go mm-hmm, ahead. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Um, I thought about sweet potatoes when I was going back and forth <laughs> spring to summer, and I assumed you were going to say it, but... Um, and I'm not listing sweet potatoes as my essentials, um, but maybe it then gives me permission to um, not get so down about maybe some of those crops that don't do well if they're not on my, you know, kind of your must have list. Well, and I think you said something there. I don't know. You didn't totally say it out loud, but you didn't have to think very hard about it. It just kind of came natural to you. Mm-hmm, and I think mm-hmm. that's a big telling tale of like, what's your essential edible for your garden? You know, if you, if you think like, what am I going to grow in my garden? And you start spitting stuff off, then you know, like, hey, this is that's definitely going to be yeah. it. So it could be it's a subconscious type of thing. Yeah. Top of mind, something like mm-hmm. that. But we know one thing and one thing only. If we grow all of our essential edibles, what good is it going to be if we don't have the recipe of the day? All right, spring pea pesto. The recipe written is going to be on Patreon, so check that out. Um, I've not had it before, but it just opened up my mind where I'm going to be growing a lot of peas. I'm going to try to grow a lot of peas. It's not an essential edible for me in my garden, but I want to try to take advantage of the cool weather of spring. And so this is one more way to consume them is my hope. This recipe is actually written for frozen or thawed, basically frozen peas that have thawed. Um, And then it has a note under the link if you're actually using fresh peas, like fresh English peas or whatever. Uh, So you're starting with two cups of peas, a half a cup of mixed herbs. It could be mint, tarragon, dill, uh, the zest of one lemon, two and a half tablespoons of lemon juice, a tablespoon of minced chives or green onion. It doesn't say optional. And even not having the recipe, I'm going to go ahead and say optional. No, (laughs) half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and then an eighth a cup of oil. So get your food processor, add the peas, add the herbs, the lemon zest, the lemon juice, the chives, or green onion, salt, pepper, olive oil. No different than you would normally make a pesto. Mix it up. You can use this any way you wish um, with pasta, cold or, you know, hot um, on some type of protein. All of the ways you can eat it immediately or per the recipe refrigerated up to three days spring pea pasta baby look at that whole seasonal eating in the recipe name spring pea i like it yeah that's something too that i might add this year is uh i need to really work out my um i don't know what to call them my snap peas 
growing. Mm-hmm. Been working on that for a couple of years. Haven't really hammered it down too well. You can't figure it out. All of it. No, I'll figure it out when I die. <laughs> Hopefully, I got a ways to go before that happens. Mm-hmm. But because um, I'm sure you'll still care about it then. I'm gonna come back and haunt everybody in the grave about that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so there's essential edibles, everybody. I hope that people can really hone down what their essential edibles are for their garden and maybe just think about it a little bit different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think it's important to kind of focus on these things. And we'll see how it goes this year. I mean, last year I really tried to focus heavily on like growing proteins and stuff. And I just I ended up having like a hodgepodge in my yeah, garden you know yeah. and it just i don't know it the whole year it just didn't seem right you mm-hmm, know what i mean mm-hmm. like it, it just feel, i felt like something was off in my garden i just don't think i have enough experience growing this much food to feel like i'm growing you know meals i'm growing pieces of things yeah. and then i have to figure it out later the reason why I like the concept of starting with essential edibles, starting with essential edibles is I know I'm going to use this stuff. Yeah. And that's the whole thing is they'll be used in multiple dishes. So you should, mm-hmm. in theory, be able to pull from your garden and create that whole meal from your garden. So that's the theory. That's the theory. We'll see if it works. <laughs> but in the meantime, before you figure out if it does or doesn't work and you need anything, check out our affiliate links, become a patron. Um, check out our YouTube channels. You got Sandy Bottom Homestead is myself. Be Better Gardens is Batavia's. And until then, just remember, we have now started to learn to grow and grow for change. See ya. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.